Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 8th, and if you look closely here, you can see this big ridge across the Gulf of Alaska encroaching onto our region. This will move across the region here, and you can imagine this is a big dome of air. It's got high pressure, that's what it is. It's a ridge, and when it moves across our complex terrain, it's going to move over and down and warm and dry out and then eventually be forced back through the mountains into western washington oregon and eventually british columbia as well will have offshore flow and that's going to bring that fire danger for us here across the western portions we'll take a look at that some detail coming up here now take a look at hurricane k down here should not be a hurricane by tomorrow morning never reached that hurricane major status i did not think it would. I was pretty skeptical of that forecast. You can see here that a hurricane just might make landfall right there on the peninsula, but then should rapidly go down to a storm and then a depression. But it could bring some interesting weather down for Southern California as far as rainfall is concerned. I guess Seattle yesterday, 78, a little bit above the average high of 74. Probably going to be about average today, I believe. And then we're really going to start to warm up tomorrow, probably an 80 degree day. And then maybe a 90 degree day there on Saturday and another warm day on Sunday before we start to cool back down towards more seasonable temperatures. But a very nice warm weekend here coming up for much of the area. Looking at fire weather outlook here, you can see some of this um, enhanced area exists for portions of Oregon and Idaho. Look at Boise there looking at some critical fire danger. And the unusual uh, elevated concerns move into the Pacific Northwest, western portions of uh, Washington and Oregon as we go on into tomorrow. And this could be extended. I don't know exactly where this will end up, but I know that western Washington will be under the gun too as well. But the good thing is if we keep the, you know, the sparks down, we don't create our own new fires. Hopefully we'll keep things from getting too bad. Although we're going to be introduced to whatever smoke's going on across eastern Oregon, Washington, British Columbia here over the next couple of days as well. And, and now look, you can see the red flag warnings that do exist for western Washington and Oregon here. And it's just calling for that higher high fire danger here is Seattle National Weather Service talking about it. Hot, dry, windy, unstable conditions. And, you know, if, if you're out there burning, I don't know why. Take the weekend off. This is not the time to be out there messing around with, uh, you know, campfires or anything like that. Now, taking a look here, hot, dry, windy index here, UW model. If we put this into motion, you can see some of that activity. We get a little bit of this hot, dry index going on across the Willamette Valley today. And then we calm down a bit as we go on into tomorrow morning, but then we quickly rebound and check this out. Look at this very high indexes coming across as we go on in through Friday across the region. Now you'll see this extend up into Western Washington a bit here too. And you can kind of see this feature here. That's where the stampede gap is. That's where we, it's a lowering in the Cascades north of Mount Rainier there near Enumclaw. And it, it allows some of those easterly winds to easily pass through that area. It's not as low as the gorge here, of course, in Oregon, but it is, and it can't even be a cold air conduit, but it does bring some easterly gap winds through that area, as anybody knows that lives out towards North Bend and Enumclaw there. Now, taking a look here, we're looking at uh, the pressure map. You can see that big ridge we pointed at earlier on the infrared satellite imagery, a big dome of air, and this just kind of moves across our region here. And when it's in this position area, this high pressure is just pushing itself out across our region. This is when these east winds are going to start. It's just going to flow over towards this area of lower pressure that kind of forms by default in this heat dome down here across the southwest. And then you can see these uh, high, the high pressure kind of slide down across the Rockies there. And we continue to have this imbalance here that wants to flow back out over into the Pacific Ocean here across western Washington, Oregon. It's going to come roaring through the gaps, the mountains here. And of course, this air, by the time it gets to us, is very dry and combustible. And that's why we have these red flag warnings up. So taking a look here, here's the HER 12 uh, Z run. This goes out 48 hours. And you can plainly see this fire kind of move into western Washington. Uh, the fire smoke move into western Washington and Oregon here on in through Friday afternoon especially. And you know this, these forecasts change from run to run basically. But you can see the amount of smoke that we have to play with out there. So I don't know just how bad it's going to get. 
and I hopefully it's not going to last more than a couple days here coming up, but definitely going to see some increased smoke here on the west sides of the Cascades for sure. This is going to show in that gap feature here. There's Mount Rainier, there's Seattle and Enumclaw, and you can kind of see this lowering in the Cascades there. That's the Stampede Gap. You'll hear more about that as we get into the fall and winter months also. It's a active weather producer pl for places out here in the southeast King County region and North Bend, Enumclaw, for example, can get some pretty strong winds from that feature. There's also a lowering up here uh, to the east of you know Everett and some of the lowlands here through, uh, you can call it the Gold Bar Pass. I don't know. There's never been a name really associated to it, but there is some lowering up here. But it's not near as low as the Stampede Gap or the Columbia River Gorge, which is actually a sea level uh, cold air conduit there you know you can get some pretty cold air flowing through there and you go out and everybody knows I think about the winds that can flow from the east and out of the west here through the Columbia River Gorge there in Oregon now checking out the NAM 3 km here this is 925 millibar winds if we put this into motion here you can see this really turn offshore as we go through on into tonight look at this winds are just roaring through the gorge here look at the uh fraser river valley is going active here also through tomorrow morning look at this some strong winds coming down through the fraser river valley here and then as we go on into friday night you can kind of see the stampede gap going there the gorge is still going these winds just racing offshore this low kind of forms by default here as this high pressure passes across our region off over the Rockies here and this thermal trough this warm air moves up over the area and this low pressure that forms by default kind of moves up our coastline here and you can see as we go on in through Saturday evening these east winds still continuing here across the region but we'll eventually get a marine push by probably Monday Sunday should cool a little bit down from uh, Saturday's high as well but now looking at the 500 millibar heights here across the region you can see the ridge plainly here and you can see that cold front that kind of moves down the Rockies here. But you can see the nice positioning of the ridge bringing us our warm weather here coming up. And we're going to look out a little bit further to see if we can spot any systems. But I haven't been able to recently. I mean, it's just kind of mundane. A little bit of a trough drops down maybe in the extended here. But I'm kind of trying to watch out for some precipitation makers. And we're not really seeing it too much here. But things can change quickly. So we'll keep our eye on the extended there. Uh, this is looking at the GFS, same thing here, just kind of com compare to the European here and see what we get. You can see that ridge move across the area here, eventually bring an end to our heat wave here. Maybe another ridge, but not, you know, no big signals out there right now, just kind of very transient nature. But you can always count on the GFS extended here. Look at this trough, it drops down here. This is way out here, 300 plus hours on the GFS. Just ni a nice little fantasy look at things here. That would be kind of an interesting system that would move across Pacific Northwest, but you can't put any stock in it at this range, but just something to watch. Just entertainment purposes only right now. Here's Portland International. You can see Saturday looks like maybe some Low to mid 90s coming up here. It's the European saying mid 90s for Portland. Then you can see the much big drop here the big drop as we go on into early next week down into more seasonable temperatures here but you can see sunday another very warm day for portland they're getting them to the upper 80s possibly uh tri cities you can see the bump going on across this weekend as we go on in through next week and we drop down towards more seasonable temperatures here seattle tacoma Europeans saying 90, the record high for Saturday is 91. Could we get there? Who knows? But uh, the takeaway from this is the very warm temperatures coming up this weekend. Almost certainly the last very hot weekend of the year for Washington. We could get another little warm spell, but it, the odds are starting to rapidly decrease by this time of year. There's also a new La Nina discussion out. They kind of updated their probabilities here, and you can see September, October, November, December here. Look at December. They've got an 80% La Nina conditions. January, over 60%. February, still odds-on favorite here for La Nina conditions rolling through February. But you can see by March, it looks like they're placing their bets here. Uh, the no is placing their bets on us being in neutral conditions here by the time we get to March and then on in through April and May. It looks like neutral conditions will be the rule across yeah, the central equatorial Pacific Ocean there. So we'll see how this goes, but you can plainly see we're probably headed for La Nina conditions through February, and that's probably not a bad bet. I kind of 
uh, my thoughts line up with this as well. So anyway, yeah, there's Hurricane K down there, big ridge, this big dome of high pressure moving over the region. It's, it's going to bring our heat coming up here, and so it's really going to power these easterly winds through our mountain gaps here. It'll be interesting to see how much smoke we get. We might chop some of the highs off these temperatures. Remember that a couple of years back, we'd predict some of these high temperatures, and the smoke would come in and kind of ruin some of those forecasts. So it's kind of a tough forecast as you get towards, um, you know, when you're dealing with smoke, it's hard to really predict just how much sunlight that's going to block out. But yeah, so this f dangerous fire weather is coming up here, folks. And, you know, take it seriously. It, you know, it's a big deal out here. It, the thing is, if, you know, it's if we get through it, it doesn't seem like much of an issue. But uh, once things start burning on the west side here, there's lots of fuel. And one of these rare events like this, hopefully we don't kick up too many fires here across western Washington and Oregon. And again, the threat is a little bit stronger. The conditions a little bit more favorable down into western Oregon here. But of course, this does include western Washington as well. So anyways, I hope you guys are having a good day. We'll take a look at this again tomorrow. We'll keep checking that extended forecast for precipitation chances. It is a slow time of the year otherwise, but this is going to quickly change as we get towards later September, of course, on into October as we start getting these mid-latitude cyclones rolling into the Pacific Northwest, and we'll be watching as they come and keep you up to date. So hopefully you guys are having a good day, and I'll talk to you guys later.